We're continuing with part two of our chapter one screencast. Now we're going to compare the insertion sort with the merge sort. It's a different sort of animal, different kind of animal if you prefer. It's a recursive sort algorithm. It's a divide and conquer program where it splits problems in half, then quarters, then eighths. Keep splitting things in half until you have a trivial problem that you solve and then you roll these trivial solutions up into one big solution. Merge sort pseudocode is simplicity itself. It's called with the parameters of A, the array of things to sort, and two numbers P and R. These are integers that represent the beginning and end point of the chunk that we're sorting. When you start merge sort, P will be equal to 1, R will be equal to N, and away you go, sorting the entire array. Obviously, when you get done splitting things into halves, quarters, eighths, sixteenths, thirty-seconds, sixty-fourths, etc., at some point you will have split the problem down until the beginning and end index of your array, the things under consideration, are equal. When that happens, you're trying to sort a single thing. And of course, a single thing is always sorted. Then it's a matter of rolling up the sub-solutions until you get the overall global solution. In line number two, you'll see that we're calculating a thing called Q, which is equal to P plus R divided by two. The funny little brackets mean round down, so we want to get an integer. This is, after all, going to be the index of an array. Uh, if we're beginning this the first time, P will be equal to 1, R will be equal to N. So we're taking N plus 1, dividing it by 2, rounding down. That's the midpoint of the array. Then we, in line 3, call merge sort of our array A, using P as the start and the midpoint Q as the end point. We then call our own function, call ourselves recursively, calculate a new value of Q for that call to the function, and then we sort A from 1 to Q, which is the midpoint of the midpoint, which is halfway through the half, which is one quarter of the way through the entire array. Keep doing this until you're done splitting the array A first halves into halves, quarters, eighths, sixteenths, thirty seconds, sixty fourths, etc. When you're done with the, f the front half, you then do in line four the back half, where you do a merge sort of the midpoint plus one to n. And this will finish the rest of the array from left to right, dealing with the little sub fractions of the problem. The merge code takes the array P, Q, and R and reassembles them, first taking one element, combining it into an array of two elements that are in order, then taking two two-element subarrays and assembling them into a four-element array that's in order, and so forth until it builds all the way back up to the entire array A. This is the tricky part of the merge sort is the merge routine. We'll talk about it next week. How many times will these recursive functions be called? Can't tell you. What's the cost to call each of these recursive functions? Don't know that either. So how on earth can we do a cost accounting like we did for the insertion sort? best we can do is count how many times we split the problem in half and how big each half is. This is a diagram which is also at the bottom of the web page showing you the illustration figure 2.5 on page 33 in your textbook. You can see that if we have an array of n there's going to be some cost associated with carrying out that calculation of Q in line number two of our pseudocode. That cost times N is going to be the number of times uh, the amount of effort involved in splitting the problem in half. 
once you have a half problem, it's going to take that same cost, but now it's only applying it over half the, as many elements, so you have C times N over 2. Thing is, you have two of these half problems, 2 times C times N divided by 2 is still C of N. Quarter problems, same thing. C times N over 4 is the amount of effort to deal with a quarter problem, but there are four quarters, adds up to CN. The question then becomes, how many levels do you have to process for an array of size N? Turns out it's related to powers of 2. As you can see, as you go down, you start with 1, then 2, then 4, then 8, then 16, then 32, etc. What we need to calculate, though, is not the number of things it's split into, but rather the number of levels. Well, there's a term called the height, which is not the number of levels, but the number of splits in between them. So, for example, going from C, CN to the CN divided by 2 half problem, there's that, that has a height of 1 you'll notice that the height is equal to the log base 2 of the number of things under consideration. So we've got two things. Log base 2 of 2 is 1, one level. Or excuse me, the height of 1, two levels. How about four things? Log base 2 of 4 is 2, 2 squared is 4. So we've got two levels. How many, uh, excuse me, height of 2, how many levels do we have? Well, we've got three of them. So it looks like log base 2 of the number of things we're looking at plus 1 is the number of levels. So log n plus 1 times c of n ought to be our big total down here at the bottom. cn log n plus c of n. What can we do with that? Take our rules for asymptotic notation and apply them. Throw away the coefficients, which is only c in this case. Ignore the lower order terms. We've got n and we've got log of n times n, so n is out. Put a big theta in front of n log n, some parentheses. You've got theta of n log n. I'm spelling out L-O-G in the phonetic pronunciation of this, but remember it's L-G the log base 2 that we're dealing with here. Don't ever confuse those. This is also not LN, the natural logs that engineers use. We're going to pause here and keep our download to a reasonable size. We'll continue with our conclusion in just a moment.